Welcome to my very, very late Q&A. I said I would do this when I hit 10,000 subscribers, but that was like months ago, so I'm sorry I'm late. But I collected all of the questions since my very first post, so I'm gonna answer most of them today. So my first question is, since when are you in ARMY? I am a Map of the Soul 7 ARMY, so about the beginning of 2020. I think I said this on other channels, but my very first performance I watched was the 2017 AMA DNA performance. I had heard through like Twitter or something that they were really good dancers and I just love like any kind of dance performances. So I wanted to watch them and I was watching the awards anyways and I was of course impressed by their performance but also impressed by like, the response to them because I had never seen like Asian artists around my age that were like so hyped up like that. But at the time I was like graduating high school and getting ready to like move for college and stuff so my life at the time was very hectic and not in the right stage to fall down the rabbit hole back then. Right before the pandemic hit, I was in London studying abroad and so during the night times I would kind of just like watch YouTube and I saw their Black Swan James Corden performance like recommended to me and I realized through the performance and the song that their music is very different than what I thought K-pop music was like. Their whole performance, their um, artistry, and their musicality is very unique. And so I kind of just wanted to see some more of them, and so I watched On Kinetic Manifesto, and then I fell down the rabbit hole from there. Anyways, your favorite BTS happy song. I think this is a very random song choice, but 24-7 Heaven. There's like an acapella clip of Jimin singing part of it and that's my alarm ringtone every morning. How far has the BTS fandom spread in the offices and have any of the viewership challenges led to people having to learn dances, etc.? If anyone doesn't know, my work office has like a channel so we're an actual like video production company that does like client, corporate, nonprofit, and entertainment work. But we did have a YouTube channel and my boss had heard like so much about BTS from me that he ended up reacting to some stuff on there and it kind of like spread through the whole office. I wouldn't say that anyone in the office is an army, but they definitely support me. Jake actually changed my entire setup into BTS wallpapers the other week and Jeff said I could keep it, so I'll show you a picture of that here. <laughs> and the viewership challenges, um, I think Jake and Jeff are actually due for a dance challenge, but we've been like super busy that we haven't been able to film, maybe one day. <laughs> Next question is, how long have you been editing? How did you learn to edit? And what sparked your interest on it? Seriously, I follow you on Instagram and even your reels are so pretty and nice to watch. Uh, thank you. If you want to follow me on Instagram, this is my Instagram. And how long have I been editing? Maybe 15 plus years? My first like editing projects were, I think I was using my parents' computer and all that was on it was like Microsoft PowerPoint. And so I'd create these like PowerPoint slide videos of things like then and now slideshows of like my favorite Disney and Nickelodeon stars. And I would like decorate each slide with like things that the artist liked. And I don't think I even showed it to anyone, but that's I just felt like creating something and that was what my eight-year-old self came up with. Then um, when I would go on trips, my grandma would ask me like, so where'd you go? Like, what did you do? Like, tell me all about it. And so I started taking my iPad at the time because I, I was too young to have a phone and all I had was an iPad. So I would take like my giant iPad on my trips and like film with my iPad edit everything with on my iPad and like make videos just for my grandma to watch. Then from like middle school, high school, I finally got like my own computer. I could do Vines, Instagram videos when they came out uh, and YouTube. And how did I learn to edit? I would say I kind of just self-taught myself how to use programs. At first I would just use things that were free to me like iMovie. Eventually when I got income, I could buy Final Cut Pro and that's kind of like a step up from iMovie. Use YouTube tutorials and anything that was available to me for free to learn how to do special things. My job title and like career title, I guess, is video editor, 
but I wouldn't say that I'm a very good one to be honest. I'm not like a professional or anything. I don't know like all these kind of special techniques and like rules of editing. I kind of just edit based on how I feel and what sparked my interest on editing. I can't sing, I can't dance, I can't draw, I can't paint, but I've always like wanted to express something creatively. Video editing is like one of the only things that I could possibly do without all these other talents and skills that are like in the arts. So yeah, it's just like the only way that I could, I guess. Is there a song that has a special meaning to you? I would say Black Swan because it was like my song that got me down the rabbit hole. Best of Me was actually my first B-side song. I was actually pretty reluctant to getting into them because when I like something, I will like it like so hardcore that I know I will spend all my money on their merch, on their albums, on their concerts, on everything. And so I was like, no, Taylor, don't do it. You're gonna <laughs> fall down too hard. So I was kind of reluctant and I was like, mm, maybe it's just their title songs that are good and I won't like their B-sides and whatever. But then I'm like, I'm just gonna try it. And so I listened to Best of Me was my first B-side song. It's like one of my favorite songs of theirs ever. And so when I listened to it, I was like, shoot, you can't resist going down this rabbit hole anymore. Like all their songs are really good. Uh, Black Swan for getting me interested into them and best of me for making me fall down their whole music history rabbit hole. <laughs> Has BTS influenced or changed your life? Of course, before the guide, I kind of had no more inspiration and I wasn't really editing that much. I didn't really have that much, felt like I didn't have that much creativity left in me, but I got this like huge spark of passion to do the guide and the guide ended up being this huge thing and it kind of motivated motivated me into keep creating more and more also just like the way that I live my life now is influenced by them a lot I think I used the example of Jin going to like movie premieres and he said he was scared but he did it J-Hope doing Lollapalooza he was very nervous but he did it and of course it turned out amazing so seeing them do things like that and all of them doing their solo endeavors and being scared to do it but doing it anyways I think that helps influence me to do things that are new and challenging like the army documentary not the guide but the army documentary that I did with Org Explorers my workplace that I was kind of like can I do it will I be able to do it well and I don't think it turned out perfect I don't think it's like amazing but it was okay I think positive negative experiences in the fandom Positive, I got a ton. Like I have, I feel like I have this whole new friendship community. I can go on Twitter and tweet things about things that people in my real life probably don't care about, but people on Twitter do. Negative, um, maybe just solos. <laughs> and not their solo projects, like solos as in the people that only love one member and like hate on the rest of them or like believe their member dislikes other members. Like. I actually didn't even realize solos existed until my draft of the, of the guide, my very first one, because people were like, those birthday ads that you put in were done by solos, like can you change them? At the time, my naive mind thought that anyone who posted of any member of BTS just had to love all of them. And now I see, especially with the solo projects coming out, that solos definitely exist, unfortunately. Describe each BTS member with one word. That's really hard. I actually want to see what you guys think. Since you guys have like more time to think about it, like leave it in the comments what word you would use because that's a really hard question. What do you think about the military service that the boys have to do? Of course, I'm gonna miss them or already do miss some of them. But like military service is just mandatory thing that every Korean man has to do. And I think especially too, if they did get exempt or they didn't do it, I think they would get hated on even more. Plus they've never said they wanted to be exempt. And so if they want to do it, then whatever they think is the best is the best. 2025 is not too far away. I don't know if we met in 25 what do you think about the hard rules of K-pop, beauty standards, perfect image, dating rules? 
they're just normal 20 something year old humans some are even younger than that they should be able to date whoever they want look however they want what Yoongi said is true like if an idol does something minor it becomes a huge scandal and it shouldn't be because if a normal 20 year old Korean guy was done doing the same thing no one would blink an eye it's completely normal when an idol does it it becomes something huge and that shouldn't be the case your wishes hopes for the future I'm very lost at the moment I've always been lost actually so I'm just trying to get through the day <laughs> What is your favorite part when it comes to creating content slash videos? My favorite part of creating videos is when I'm done. <laughs> I think it's something that happens with every kind of creator or artist, but it's super hard for me to eat, sleep, do anything other than my project until I'm finished with it. And I think I've seen it happen. I mean, I've definitely seen it happen with the members as well. I think they're just like so into creating their album or art or performance that they like forget about doing things to like upkeep their personal health that happens with me as well for example like when i was editing the guide i would think about it like all the time and like as soon as i got home from work i would start working on it and then i would work on it until like i physically couldn't keep my eyes open anymore until i finished it it would just give me like this anxiety and stress that I just need to finish it, like I want to finish it now. So yeah, when I can finish it and let go of that stress, then that's my favorite part and I can just watch it as its final product. <laughs> How do I shop BTS inspired products from you? Uh, I don't really mention it often on the channel, but I have this little shop. We make things like this necklace I made. I don't know if you can see, but there's a charm that says V. And I like hand beaded sew them. So we have little things like that and embroidered items, shirts, and a bunch of stickers and other things. So you could shop them at Gold Phoenix Studio on Instagram. And we also have a website that I'll put in the description. Shipping internationally, especially especially to Germany, because I know they have a lot of um, rules on packaging and shipping, is sometimes very hard and expensive. So I'm sorry if international shipping to you is not available or very expensive but that's just how the shipping works unfortunately do i have a favorite animal pet uh yes i like dogs and this is my dog oreo can you can you come up here come come <laughs> this is my dog oreo when bts announced their hiatus last year armies around the globe were shocked and extremely sad because we did not know what to expect and were extremely afraid of losing them I remember you posted a video to express your thoughts in the wee hours. You were comparing the feelings you had when 1D broke up, but you said that you had more trust and faith that BTS will be back. I find that video inspiring, coming straight from your heart in the purest and most sincere way. It reflected many of our feelings then too. It is comforting to know we were not alone and our feelings were all valid. Shortly after you deleted it. Why? I was listening to Amindala. It somehow reminds me of your video. Borhe. So yeah, um, right after watching the 2022 Vesta video, I filmed like this very like out of my mind video. I did mention One Direction, but it's because I said I knew BTS weren't like One Direction. Like I have 100% confidence in their words and that I know they weren't breaking up. They're just like taking this break and we'll be back soon. So I knew they weren't disbanding, but I did tear up a little. <laughs> uh, I took it down. One, because that video for some reason shot up in views very quickly and there were media companies like emailing me, contacting me to use my video in their news broadcast or article or whatever. And at the time, media was not being kind to BTS. They were taking it as like a disbandment announcement or some of them were. And I didn't want my video to be used in any type of headline like that because that's t totally not true. And so just to protect myself and BTS, I didn't want that video to be up anymore just in case media like took it and ran with it in the wrong way. So yeah, that's the first reason why I took it down. The second reason is because it's embarrassing. I was like out of my mind at the time. It was like probably 3.30, 4 a.m. in the morning, but yeah. Thanks for finding it comforting and I'm glad it helped you. 
Hi Taylor, I was wondering if you have a dream project, something creative that you would personally love to do if you had unlimited time, resources at your disposal. Um, I don't really have a specific dream project, but I would like to do anything that can have a big impact on people. I don't think I've ever mentioned it, but the guide is not my first video to reach like a million views. I had another video that I made probably in like middle school or early high school that was like um, an LGBT plus pride kind of video. Somehow that shot to a million views and I got very um, amazing comments on it. Like it helped people come out to their family or help them accept themselves and other people and help people be more open-minded. Looking back at it, it's not, not edited very well. It's not a great video, but I'm glad that it helped people. So things like that, the guide, the army documentary that could help shift people's mindsets into being something more open-minded, more accepting is probably m my dream projects. I had heard from a few people that you are in Hawaii, so I was worried about you. I pray you are okay and doing well. Yes, I do live in Hawaii, but I don't live on Maui. Hawaii is made up of a bunch of different islands, so I live on Oahu and the huge fire happened on Maui. So if you don't know, um, Maui, which is our neighbor island, about two islands away or about there, had a huge fire and Lahaina is basically gone. It's totally burned down. Hawaii is in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and it's very hard for us to get resources when emergencies like that happen. It takes a very long time. All of the islands are kind of tr trying to provide resources to them with donations, volunteer work, all of that. So even I tried to do my part in donating in ways that I could. So I actually had tons of ARMY's help for this. With the shop that I mentioned earlier, I have tons of stickers on hand and I posted that 100% of the proceeds of this sticker pack that I made would go to Maui. And so I posted it for ARMY's to see and a bunch of ARMY's bought it. And thank you to everyone that did. I had one army who always buys from us said, once you reach $100 in sales, I will match your $100. And then I told my boss what I was doing and he said he would match the $100 as well. We also did a raffle at one of the BTS events on the island with a denim cookie plushie that I bought. Every dollar was one raffle ticket. So in total, with army's help, we collected about almost $600 and I gave it 100% to Maui Mutual Aid and Maui United Way. Where did you grow up and how did you end up working in Hawaii? I grew up in Hawaii, so I was born on Oahu. Naturally, I work here. <laughs> How's your chapter two going? I'm trying to live in the present like Namjoon says. But sometimes it's hard because I have to think about my future finances and how what I'm going to do in the future and how I'm going to live. So yeah, I think it's going well, but slowly. <laughs> what small habits makes you incredibly happy on a daily basis? I think one thing that makes me in a good mood is like the first thing I do when I wake up is pet my dog, pet him, say good morning to him. And when I come home, pet him again, say hi and his happiness like radiates positive energy. <laughs> now for the question that I've been getting through YouTube comments, through Instagram DMs, through Twitter DMs, through email, like I seriously get this question probably almost every day. Can you do an update to the BTS guide? Have you thought about updating your guide to BTS? There are tons of these comments. So my full answer is no, there will not be an update to the original guide to BTS video. But my plan is to do a whole separate video on just chapter 2. So that'll include anything for proof until right before their next group come back in 2025 or 26 or whenever they plan to have their next group come back. I've been getting this uptake question ever since Jack and Lost came out. Like I knew that every single member would release some kind of solo project and I didn't want the other members projects to be left out and only include like 
whoever released their albums first. Because if I had only updated half of them, then it would look like the other half didn't do anything, which I knew wasn't going to be true. If I kept updating that original video, I would have to update it like every single month or every single week or every single day because like the members release so much content. Even now, as V says he's the last member to release a solo project, I still don't want to update it because I know that Jungkook still has an album that he's working on. I know that Namjoon's working on another album. Jin might release another album maybe in 2024 or if he plans to release it. Hobie documentary about dance was mentioned and you know that the members have a ton of stuff more planned for us. I don't want to miss out on any of that being included and so I'm gonna wait until right before the next group come back. And I think the timing will be good because there might be a whole new group of ARMY joining for their next group comeback. And so they can get ready for the next group comeback by watching the first Guide to BTS video and then watching the second one, kind of learning about how each member shined and their solo errors. So yeah, my final answer to that question is no, I will not update the original guide to PTS. I will leave it as is as their record of nine years and then separate video on chapter two is in the plans. Thank you so much for the support on the first video by the way, the guide to BTS, the original one. Lots of people have been suggesting it to reactors and even though I don't watch reactors really, I do watch the ones that you guys recommend to me. So if you find some cool genuine reactors send them my way, I'd love to watch them. I hope you could learn a little bit more about me in this video and if you have any more questions about me, uh, you can leave them in the comments, I guess. Okay, bye.